Hey guys and welcome to today's video. So today we're going to take a look at an onboard of the Janetta G57 at Donington Park. As you can see here I'm driving on Project Cars 2 with the Oculus Rift headset. So I'm going to talk you through some of the lap. Um, there's a couple of key points that are sort of quite interesting um, with this car and this circuit sort of you wouldn't normally uh, pick up if you're just watching it. So I'm going to pause it there. We're going through Craner Curves here and it's you know about 150 mile an hour corner. Absolutely flat out, no lifting. Um, all the downforce of this car, see all the little bits of um, all the flicks and the wings um, and the floor as well, all very uh, complicated stuff. Uh, really helps to keep the car onto the ground, gives it a lot of grip. Um, obviously the layout of it as well, engine behind the driver and um, obviously all the gearbox and stuff back there. The weight's very central, so it gives the car a very good platform to work from. And obviously massive tyres as well, that always helps. But uh, yeah, it's a very quick car going through um, a high-speed corner like this. Um, you know, a lot of grip, a lot of uh, confidence in the car from a driving point of view. Um, you know, if, I felt confident to do this straight away, flat out in the first session I drove the car, which obviously you know, this was the quickest I'd ever been when I actually drove it um, in real life, which you'll see um, after we've done a couple of laps on Project Cars too. But uh, I'm going to play the video now. We're going to take a further look around the uh, the lap. Obviously, through there was. Old hairpin, ran a little bit wide on the way out, uh, which I wasn't too happy about, so I think he did another lap at the end. But uh, that was mainly because we just missed the kerb on the way in, so probably just turned a little bit late, maybe carried a bit too much speed in, and then that set us a bit wide on the exit as well. Uh, but we managed to get away with it because it's quite flat there. It's only mud, there's no sort of gravel or ruts or anything like that, so it's always helpful. Coming to the chicane now, and obviously the chicane's um, one of the sort of standout corners of the national circuit of Donington. It's slower than all the other corners, it's third gear, um, and yeah, it's a bit different with the other corners. The other corners flow quite nicely, whereas it's a bit sort of stoppy start because you have to go left, right and then left, and then open it back up for the straight. So as you can see there, we had a big old slide in the, at turn one, red gate, and uh, that's just carrying a bit too much speed in. The rear looks a bit stiff to me, um, so I'd probably soften that off on the setup if I was going to adjust it. Uh, here you can see we're going to get a lot more kerb there, much better. We didn't use the exit on the on the mud, so that was a lot better. We're going to come up towards this left kink here before turning into McLean's. And yeah, just picking up that apex nice and late, using all the road. It's a very fast track this, really a lot of high speed corners. Say 5th gear through Craners, 4th gear through Old Hairpin, 4th um, gear through McLean's and 3rd gear through Coppice. And, you know, they're all very high speed corners. so. It's a real good track to drive if you enjoy uh, high speed corners like I do. So we're going to take a look at me driving the circuit now in the Janetta G57. As you can see we're coming up to the final chicane here, really high entry speed, a lot quicker than the uh, old Cortina in front of us, I believe that's Cortina anyway. But uh, we're coming down towards turn one now, as you can see picking up fifth gear and uh, looking for our braking point at about 150 miles an hour there before braking. Gently bringing the car into the apex, a little bit of understeer at the, uh, at the apex and then a bit of oversteer on the exit as well. Really fast now, all the way down towards Craners. And again, going through Craners here, just over 150 miles an hour, and then braking for the right hander. Really uh, high apex speed there, and you can really feel the aero of the car pushing um, the car into the ground and giving you more grip. We're going to head up to a very quick left kink here, which turns into a corner at this kind of speed, and then we're going to go into a right hander. Again, picking up the power, using all the road. Um, this car is so grippy, so it's got so much power. It's very light, and uh, obviously it's it's designed to go quickly. And um, there's you know it, there's very there's not many things that are forgiving about this car. It's uh, very intense, very stiff, very reactive. As you can see, the steering inputs are you know pretty minimal, apart from obviously for the slower corners. But uh, it's very reactive to whatever you do. Very bumpy as well. You can see with the camera. And um, obviously again, this is my visor cam, and uh, you can see it shows everything that I can see. The camera is obviously placed about an inch higher than my head. But, um, or, or my eyesight but and you can see as well we just went past the Ginetta G55 and that was a car that I raced in last year and the year before so 2017 2016 uh, not that particular car obviously because my one was green but that model of car in the Ginetta Super Cup and you can see how much quicker this G57 is and um, which has even had even more upgrades since this video was taken because you know, I did this lap at the end of 2016 so yeah, you can see just how quick this car is and um, really is uh, a, a proper proper race car this um, obviously very long and uh, engine behind us now as well compared to the Genetta uh, G55 so obviously the G55 is the engine at the front and the G57 is the engine at the rear which makes a big difference to how the car feels 
um, you tend to get a lot more uh, snappy oversteer rather than progressive oversteer which is why they're harder to drive as well so I hope you enjoyed that guys and please keep a lookout for the next video and I'll see you in the next one